Hello, my loves. We are back for chapter seven of The Care and Feeding of a Pet Black Hole by Michelle Cuevas. Chapter seven is called Think Like a Proton. Very sciencey, this book, for those of you that are science fans and STEMI people. Larry and I became so close. I even told him what was on the recording. The one I was trying to deliver to NASA the day that he decided to follow me home. I told him about Carl Sagan, the astronomer, and NASA, and how they were building a spacecraft called the Voyager. I told him what I'd told Cosmo about how on the Voyager there would be a golden record and how the record would contain everything on Earth. You have to wonder, I told Larry, how other kids at school are able to stay so focused on the length of their pants and movie stars' various chins when things like this are happening in the world. I showed Larry my list. During classes at school, I wrote and rewrote the lists of everything that would be on the golden record. I had them memorized just about. My favorite was the list of sounds. Music of the spheres was number one. Number two, volcanoes, earthquake, thunder. Number three, wind, rain, surf. Number four, crickets, frogs. Number five, birds, hyena, elephant. Number six, chimpanzee. Number seven, wild dog. Number eight, fire, speech. Number nine, tractor. Number 10, horse. Number 11, train. Number 12, auto, bus. Number 13, kiss, mother and child. Number 14, footsteps. Number 15, heartbeat. Number 16, laughter. I wonder how they decided who got to make the sounds. Whose footsteps, whose kiss, whose heartbeat and laughter and barking dog would be the ones to greet alien life? It was something to think about. So I decided to record my dad's laugh. And then I planned to go and convince Carl Sagan to put it on the Voyager Golden Record. I asked Larry if he wanted to hear the recording and he blobbed his head up and down. It was a good recording, a good memory. But every time I listened to it, it felt as if some giant invisible thing had come and left footprints in the snow and inside my chest. Still, I looked down at the recorder and pressed play. We'd been sitting at the kitchen table, you and me, with the tape recorder recording. Now here's a good one, you said. How do you organize a space party? I don't know, I said, how? You plan it, you replied with a smi slight smile. Plan it, good one, I said. I've got one too. Where do geneticists like to swim? Where, you asked. In the gene pool, I, I said. Ha, I like that one, you said. Hey, by the way, have you heard about the new book on anti-gravity? What about it, I asked. It's impossible to put down. And we laughed. How do you think like a proton, I asked. How? You stay positive, I giggled. That one you especially liked. Big laugh for the proton. Why are chemists great at solving problems, I asked. I don't know why. Because they have all the solutions. You laughed and then said, why can you never trust atoms? Why, I asked. Because they make up everything, you replied. We laughed even harder. So you said, I guess you got your recording, I'm glad. It's definitely a big responsibility. Oh, I agree, you said. I mean, you choose someone with one of those high-pitched screaming laughs and maybe the aliens turn around. If they put some weird snort laugh on the Voyager record, 
we can say bye bye to hovercraft cars and magical space cheese. So long, secrets of the galaxy. I press the stop button on the recording. Larry looked sad, but that was it. It was the only recording I had of your voice. I wondered if I could rearrange the words on the tape, every noun and verb and adjective to make a new conversation. But no, we would never speak again. And that truth was one of the many things that I wished I could throw away forever into my pet black hole. It's the end of chapter seven. I'm gonna continue with chapter eight. Chapter eight is called, My Very Good, Very Bad Black Hole. Actually, I'm not. I'm gonna have to start chapter eight another time, boys and girls. I will see you later, my loves. I have an appointment to go to. Goodbye.